Here I have a friend's uh, Shure PG58 wireless microphone. It's a, a PGX2 transmitter and a PGX4 receiver just out of shot there. This has got what's possibly a fairly common fault. Well, full disclosure, I've found another YouTube video, or rather he has, that does a complete teardown and repair of the same fault on this. In the case of the other video, it was the um, power button that's faulty. Uh, this has got brand new batteries in, and what you should be able to do is hold the power button down, and it clicks, and by holding it down, it should power on. The light will come on, and you can see it's doing nothing. Just to show you that there are brand new batteries in the bottom, uh, right there, and we've checked the voltage on these, and I know these are okay, so it's not the batteries. So I'm wondering if it's the same fault, essentially, uh, that's uh, as the other video shows. And hopefully, after looking at that, I've got some replacement switches, if that is the case, uh, that might fit. So I'm going to show how to get into one of these. So take the batteries out if you've got them, and then. Um, you can un either unscrew the top head or you can unscrew the, uh, the bottom thread here and that's the one I want so where it's got the sure label if you grab that and unscrew the whole thing the top head comes off and it's got a set of gold contacts on the bottom of the head and inside there's a board with uh, the little gold contacts there also take the, uh, the bottom off uh, the bottom half off and take the uh, batteries out as well if you haven't already. So this is the bit we're interested in. So I now need uh, circlet pliers and I know I've got some somewhere. I'm going to have to pause here while I root around and see if I can find them. Can't find my circlet pliers so here's what we're going to try. Ordinary cocktail stick and break it in half. I'm going to put this thing between my knees and <laughs> see if I can get this out. Look at that, We've done it. <laughs> Cocktail sticks never cease to amaze. Okay, now I'm going to take the two screws out of the bottom. These sets, such as the iFixit set, not a sponsor, uh, but sets like these with the different uh, bits, the really good quality heads, I really like because if you ever put a bit in something and it just doesn't feel right, it feels like it's slipping. Um, change to a different head and find something that feels right and then you'll always get a, a really solid action on there and you won't chew the screw out. Uh, I think I went with a Philips number one or two, I think it was there for this one. Now next thing to do if you can very carefully take a flat bladed screwdriver and just gently lift this board up. It's connected into a little uh, th about a three pin connector. If you're just careful you can pop that connector out and take this little board out. You can see there's a little three pin connector there that just goes into a little socket on here. And then this is the board that we're going to want to remove. And down here if I can shine the torch, I'm not sure if the camera will really pick it up, but there's a tiny little plastic latch that holds this trim piece on around the button. We need to press that down to be able to get the little trim piece off because there's a couple of little retainers around that button. That was really hard. That took a uh, long screwdriver again, trying not to slip and break the uh, light pipe underneath. You'll see what I mean when I take this off. Underneath there, that little clip, is a little light pipe for the LED. So when you get that plate off, uh, put that to one side, so there's a little rubber button on the top and then there's this little plastic frame piece that just sits in the top there and all you've got to do is uh, remove the battery compartment it's kind of a battery frame uh, which you can actually I think you pull up from the bottom yeah carefully you can pull up from the bottom and just finagle it out like that and then the whole board will slide out the top and right at the bottom there's a little infrared sensor you have to be careful of that's for synchronizing the units together uh, I believe they can transmit uh, the frequency uh, data so that you can sync uh, any um, handheld unit to any receiver just by doing a sync process and there we go 
So this is the tiny switch in question and first thing I'm going to do is a continuity test on that switch. So I have my multimeter, my phone in the way, and my multimeter on continuity. I'm going to try and hold this in place. In fact I think I'll put it down to do it. It's not easy because with it being of course round at the back it rolls around. So um, I press the button and I'm getting a resistance reading but not a uh, solid continuity. I'm getting about 200 ohms at best. So there is some resistance in that contact. Let me just show the meter. Let me pull that into vision. So if I can do this there is some uh, oxidization in the contacts on that button and again it does seem to be a common fault must be a pretty lousy button unfortunately that they use I press it down I, no I can't really get it much lower than what 300 ohms now let's try just popping the battery clip back in so I'm not going to put it in the body of the mic I'm just going to pop the battery clip just back into place as best I can. Uh, that'll do for now. I'm going to pop the batteries back in. As long as they make brief contact, it's fine. So make sure you put them in the right way. I'm going to bridge the pins of that with my uh, tweezers. So very carefully bridge the pins of that switch and it lights up. So yes it's faulty. I'll do it again, see if it turns off. Yes, there we go. So the unit's uh, at least powering on and we do have a faulty button. So unfortunately the ones that I've got are almost right but they're not quite tall enough. If they're not quite tall enough the little stem on the button won't reach uh, to work it properly. So I am going to have to order uh, a new switch and because it's quite a common fault these switches are available on eBay for about a fiver, uh, which is a load of money for one tiny button, but you'd only get them cheaper if you were to uh, buy a whole batch of them. So we're going to buy one, I'll wait for that to come in, and then I'll resume the uh, soldering process to get that new switch fitted. After several days, finally, we have a switch. Um, it seems to be a common enough fault that if you look on eBay for sure wireless mic switch or sure wireless mic button you'll find these really easily They're only about a fiver the vast majority of them are from China and this one claimed to be in the UK they lied um, that absolutely wasn't in the UK that was definitely in China it took ages to come and it's the old trick of um, write that it's in the UK on the uh, description and then express ship it from China to a UK warehouse and then put a UK uh, tracking number on it yeah it took about 10 days or something to arrive it took ages so um, by all means if you're um, if you've got one of these to repair and you're trying to do it for a, a gig or something try and do it in a rush be aware that the button if you order it from eBay will take ages to come I think you can probably get them from uh, electrical suppliers I've seen a couple of people mention people like Mauser uh, the only problem with that is if you try to order one switch you'll pay probably a 25 quid handling charge on top of it so unless you're tacking it on the back of an existing order that's probably not the smartest way to repair one microphone if you've got a few of them to do then that's your call so what I'm going to do now is take this little board off and um, there's another little connector that goes down to the uh, infrared sensor at the bottom that little connector is tucked down here on the back so hopefully if I take this screw out just screwed into the plastic this board should just unplug from that infrared connector yeah it's coming there we go so that's the little gain switch on the, uh, the back there and then this little board I'm going to secure into something and start a process of removing this old switch now what may be hard to see in this shot is that right around the switch there are some incredibly tiny 
uh, surface mount components. There's a very, very, very tiny uh, capacitor and resistor, especially kind of underneath the switch, um, budge right up against it. Perhaps if I turn it around, uh, that might be might be a little more visible. I don't know if you can see them. Right down under here, some super tiny components. Um, I've got to be obviously careful around those. Uh, I can see there's a tiny capacitor above the switch as well. Normally what I would do with a part like this is use hot air and Captain tape. I'm actually going to use a combination of the soldering iron and um, hot air at the same time. I'm going to use the soldering iron to heat the joints uh, on each side of the switch and I'm going to try and use the hot air on a very low airflow to keep the joint hot so that I can, when this is covered with Captain tape, I can just sort of flick the switch off without disturbing anything else around it too much. So I'm going to try and mask that off as carefully as I can um, and see uh, how I go on. Okay, I've got a little bit of flux on there. Let's see uh, how we go on. Let's get this hot air panel to temperature. Let's see what we can do. Again, now the ball's cooled a little bit, let's just get some more flux on there again. And I want to remove the solder from the pads on that. It's interesting, there's a couple of the uh, pads underneath. I wonder if they'd size this board for two possible switches, or one of two possible switches on the bill of materials, I should say. So let's get these pads flat. No, that solder on the pads in the middle, I don't think it's helping us at all. I'll never remove that. Let's see if we can do this. side and go back to the other side. Yeah. I wasn't looking forward to that. <laughs> Get it back together and test it. Apologies if the lighting's a bit uneven in here. Um, but I think we do for a thunderstorm, so the sun's going in and out like mad. So I'm having to turn lights on. So this is going to be a bit tricky, I think, because this connector on the infrared sensor on the bottom is on a flat flex. So I'm going to have to hold it in place, I think, with the tweezers while I try and uh, get the board back on. It's kind of going to be one of those jobs where you could do with three hands possibly but uh, I'll see oh that's not too bad that's got it that's it there's a little peg there as well on the board that should hold it steady and then we can pop the screw back in. Oops, okay. Hopefully you can see down there if I hold it on. Lights up. 
and I've got the receiver just out of shot and the ready lights come on on the receiver so looks like we're good we hold it down again yeah it's going off let's put the board back in the end head on and I know I haven't put the clip back in yet but again that's not important right now I'm just tapping the end of the mic and the audio lights coming on so that's good let's just hook that up to the amplifier and just check again one two one two if um as a sound engineer if anybody knows a number higher than two uh, please leave it in the comments we've been uh, on that quest for years that was a bit of a between the knees job again I actually ended up using the uh, ends of my tweezers I probably should have done that the first time actually I tried to get it back in with cocktail sticks and the cocktail sticks were just break, <laughs> breaking under the pressure so uh, yeah I find it probably easier with a set of tweezers but uh, yeah I just managed to uh, finagle that back in and it's fine so uh, again get that a blow out and put the Turn the amplifier off and put your head back on. It's not the easiest screw to try and get the uh, thread to match when you're trying to get this back on, so uh, don't try and force it and cross thread it because it's only the plastic body. And get this cover back on. Before I put this really awkward piece back on, I just wanted to give it one final check to make sure uh, everything's all right. And then this bit should snap back into place. That's it. Yep. Then there's just a couple of screws to put back in the bottom here. And that's complete, all done. There you go a little bit awkward to press um, but it's definitely going it's kind of awkward you have to do it with your thumbnail a little bit and I've cut my thumbnails so you hear it clicking it's fine but yep the receivers blinking so I think we're all good there so uh, yeah fairly straightforward repair in terms of yeah just swap the switch um, but it's pretty delicate uh, in terms of what's around that board and getting everything out of the board without kind of damaging one thing or the other but um, if you do have that fault with uh, your PGX microphone uh, it may be the cause and the parts are readily available on eBay if you fancy a go with the delicate soldering by all means have a go uh, I think the part was only about a fiver uh, so we've got that sorted so hopefully that might be of some use or entertainment to someone so Thanks for watching.